does that even mean, Bowers Game Corner? Oh, hey there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review, a special Kickstarter review. And today I'm very excited to check it out Roar Stack from Roar Stack LLC. This is for ages 4 to 114. It'll take about 20 to 30 minutes to play. And in Roar Stack from Roar Stack LLC, you are going to be creating a story with your Othello opponents. You're going to be doing this by using ink blots that will be on cards. Now, there's different variants to the game, but in one of them, you're actually going to be trying to steer your opponents towards particular topics in order to score points. What am I talking about? Let's open it up and see how it works. Alright then, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Roar Stack from Roar Stack LLC on our grip mat, which turns every game into a space game. Before we get started, I do want to mention this is the promotional copy I have in front of me, so take what you see here with a grain of salt. I know they're going to improve this insert so it's not just a piece of paper, they're going to have it glued in and all this other sort of stuff. So just take what you see here with a grain of salt. So in Roar Stack, what are you going to be doing? Well, you're going to be telling stories using ink blots on cards. And you're going to be trying to connect these stories. Uh, you're going to be working as a team to create a story, I should say. And you're going to be using these ink blots on your card to try and connect the stories based on whatever theme you choose in the game. But there's lots of different ways to play this game. I'm not going to be able to go over all of them. I'm just going to go over one, the one that I personally like the best, uh, which was point play. But there's also twisted play and ideation play and story play. And I believe they're going to put even more of these on the website, uh, so they definitely plan on supporting this game in the future. So before we get into how that works, let's get into the components. Now, in Roar Stack, you're essentially going to get, I think, like 104 cards, or something around that. Uh, and half of them are going to be a standard 52-card deck of cards. So, you know, your ace through king sort of thing, um, with all the different suits. But in the middle, you're going to have various different ink blots. Uh, so, as you can see, every, every card is going to be unique with the ink blot in the middle. So that's your deck over there. Next, you're also going to be getting another deck of cards without all the symbols, without the ace and the king and everything. Uh, that's going to be called your point cards. And on these cards, you're going to have various different ways you can score points in certain game modes. Not all the game modes are going to score points, though. So, for instance, this one says, An opponent asks a question involving your car. An opponent mentions dinosaurs, plus 15 points of a specific dinosaur. An opponent references alcohol or any alcoholic beverage. That'll collect you two points. So these are ways you're going to be able to score points in the game. Uh, and those are called the point cards, and each one of those is going to have unique ink plot. Now this isn't making sense yet, so let's get to our rule cards. Now I will say the rule cards, they told me that these are outdated versions of the rule cards. I sincerely hope so, because these will show you how to play, but they need to be updated in my opinion. They're, they are not up to snuff quite yet. Uh, so the point play version, how you're going to do, is you are going to decide on what the theme of your story is going to be. You're going to decide if you want it to be a, about robots or monsters or the zoo or dinosaurs or whatever the heck you want to decide about. And then each player is going to get four of the standard 52 card deck cards with the ink blots in the middle. And they're also going to get four point scoring cards. Now how this is going to work is uh, someone's going to start the story based on the theme. So let's just say we, we said the theme was going to the zoo. So let's take a look at my card. So we were going to the zoo one day and all of a sudden we were looking at the, uh, the spiders and one of the terrifying spiders climbed out and bit me. And I was super terrified because I was wondering what was going to happen next. So that would be the card that would play in the middle. Now the next player is going to then uh, then going to continue on the story. Now, this probably wasn't the best thing to do uh, because what you're trying to do is you're trying to steer your opponents into a particular topic based on your point cards. So, for instance, let's see, an opponent asks a question about an animal. So, perhaps I should have been more elusive about the spider. Like, I should have left some really juicy question about the spider in the air. An opponent talks about their car. An opponent says something about the Bachelor of Innovation. An opponent is confused by the game rules. So, for instance, uh, the next person didn't know what was going on and say, wait, wait, so what do I do? Do I have to follow this or do I have to do that? Then you'd say, I pity the fool, and you'd play this down, and then you would score two points. And then whenever anyone else happened to make a mistake and not understand the rules, well, not make a mistake, but uh, could be confused by the rules, you would continue to score those two points. So what you're trying to do is you're actually trying to, to, to sort of steer the story to your opponent so that they will reference one 
of the cards that you have that's going to score points. And you're going to be going to go to a set number of points. I believe it said 50 uh, or 100 points. And, and once you run out of cards, you'll, you'll reshuffle, re well, you'll redeal, and you will continue with another story. And the first person to get the set amount of points is going to be the winner. Now, that is just the point play variant of the game. As I mentioned, there are other variants, but I'm not going to go into all of them. But needless to say, that is my favorite of the four that I tried. So, that was Roar Stack. Oh, right there, Roar Stack from Roar Stack LLC. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, the game's not going to be for a lot. A lot. Let me rephrase that, a lot of people. It's a storytelling game which is instantly going to turn some people off. Also, if you have a gaming group or you yourself are not creative and can think on your toes, this game is not going to be for you, and this game could be extremely frustrating. I had that happen with a couple people. They just, my wife in particular, hated this game because she couldn't think on her toes. And just, those people are really not going to like this game. Also, the packaging is going to turn a lot of people off because this is essentially what they're going to go for, which is not going to be, you know, this is, if you're very superficial about how your games look on your shelf, then this one's not going to be for you. Not saying it's a bad thing, just saying this is what they're going for, so this isn't something that you want. Well, I don't think they're going to have any uh, other kind of packaging unless they hit big stretch goals. Uh, the last kind I have with this is the rule cards. And this is a big one. The rule cards are not up to snuff right now. Now, they told me I'm working with older versions of the rule cards, but uh, right now, just for how simple the games are, they needed to be better, better done. Just period. Um... Because the games themselves are not complex, but we read them and we're like, wait, uh, can, we do the, uh, can we do that? Is it okay if we do this? And there were just too many questions for what should be a simple game. But hopefully they fix all that up. Because, moving on to the pros, there's a lot of cons there. I like this game. I like this game an awful lot. And there's a couple reasons why I like this game. First and foremost, I love this packaging. Some people are absolutely going to loathe this packaging. They're going to despise it. However, I like this packaging a lot for two main reasons. First and foremost, it's incredibly portable and compact. Uh, it shows you can fit this in a pocket, you really can. Book bag, anything like that, you can put it in there, it's not going to be coming all this large. I like that an awful lot. The other reason, uh, and this is kind of an odd reason before I get into the game, is because this having this with you, with this extreme portability, means you're always going to have a standard deck of cards with you, which is always a great thing to have, period. But moving on to the game itself, why do I like this game so much? Full disclaimer, I love storytelling games. I really do. I enjoy the heck out of my created one myself. That's how much I enjoy them. Uh, so needless to say, whenever I get a storytelling game, I'm very excited. And I like this because it brings some new stuff to the table. I like the inkblot idea because there's a lot of replayability there because each and every person is going to look at a card and see something different. So you'll have those moments like, wait, what? What do you see there? You're just making that up. Like we had to get it so there was a house rule where we voted on if someone saw something in a card because sometimes we were like, I think you might just be trying to steer a story a certain way. Uh, but, but I like the ink block concept. But the main thing that I liked about this game, and did not make it feel like any other game, at least when you're playing the point version, was that you're trying to, you're working together to create a story, but you're trying to steer people to say certain things. And I like that. That's a really cool concept, trying to manipulate someone, and they have no idea that you're trying to manipulate them. You're just, you're just essentially just setting the bait, and you're like, oh. Oh, say it. Say, say your favorite. Say a movie. Say a movie. Say a movie. Say a movie. Well, we went to the movie theater, and we had a lot of issues, so we talked to the manager, and I said, this is unacceptable. And then you're just like, oh, gosh. Oh, come on. Say a movie. Say a movie. And they say a movie like, boom! Points! Uh, I like that an awful lot. I think that's a really, really cool concept that I'd like to see explored in more games, because I think it really is very unique uh, for any of the storytelling games I've played. So, overall, I enjoy Roar Stack. If you like storytelling games, I think you will also enjoy Roar Stack. But I will say, full disclaimer, a lot of people that I played with in my gaming group did not like this game. So, check it out, see if it's your cup of tea, and check out the Kickstarter link below. Tell them Bowers Game Corner set you. In the comments below, let me know, have you ever been to Gen Con? Do you want to go to Gen Con? Well, obviously you want to go to Gen Con. It's amazing! Uh, but have you ever been to Gen Con? What is your favorite event? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.